This is the Blender 5 release, although Blender back to 4.3 is also still supported. If you run Decal Machine 2.16 in Blender 5, you'll need to do an asset update, including for the supplied example assets. After that asset library update, you should then update any blend files created in earlier versions that you want to continue working in too. This asset update modernizes the parallax node tree used by decal and trim sheet materials. Making use of the new repeat zones, it now supports adjustable parallax stepping. You can adjust the stepping directly in the shader or using the adjust tool or globally in the sidebar's default section. When creating normal mapped decals from geometry while the new scale to fit option is enabled, the height map will now use the maximum value range determined by the geometry's depth. The parallax amount is then set automatically and adaptively to maintain consistency from one decal to the next. And this is now independent of the source mesh scale too, when previously the scale in relation to the distance value determined the value range. When adjusting the parallax amount using the adjust tool, the height map's value range is taken into account and converted into a sensitivity factor. This ensures consistent adjustments across different decals with different height maps and height value ranges. Notice how a high contrast height map requires very small parallax amount changes, whereas a low contrast height map requires bigger changes. Note also how the result in the viewport is then exactly the same for all three different decals. The slice tool now has a redo panel, which allows you to control its behavior, including slice mode, which was previously only accessible through modifier keys. Previously in Decal Machine 2.13, I've introduced the ability to shrink wrap panel decals. This is now done automatically for float sliced panel decals, but can be disabled in the add-on preferences. This ensures a tighter fit, even though the float sliced panel's topology differs from its target object. Automatic shrink wrapping is then also forcibly disabled or enabled on first tool invocation, depending on the resulting panel decal. For instance, a panel decal with harsh corners will disable shrink wrapping, whereas it's enabled for smooth panels. This means less clicks with better results while still giving you full control over the outcome via the redo panel. That said, for a case like this, you shouldn't actually use float slicing in the first place, of course. This is where topo slicing shines. When creating a trim sheet that uses a normal map, while also having either a color, metallic, or roughness map, you can now create fully textured thumbnails for the individual trims. This is achieved through temporary textures on the instant trim decals and aims to make identifying trims easier for trim sheets that make heavy use of color maps in cases where the normal maps play a supplemental role only or where the same normal map is combined with different color maps in different trim sheet variants. Do note, however, that these temporary textures are only kept for the thumbnail creation and will be removed on the actual trim decals. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to material match them, of course. The sheet itself will still use those maps, however. And so once you trim cut or trim unwrap, you'll see them accordingly. The panel cut tool now exposes the solver selection and defaults to exact. In the past, the faster float solvers could occasionally produce cuts that aren't fully closed as shown here. But the exact solver should handle these cases better. The example panel 13's parallax amount has been increased considerably, creating these beautifully deep, convincing splits now. And finally, there's this quick access button in the sidebar now that takes you to the decal machine preferences.